Mr. Ken here with the last part, part seven of lesson number three. So we're now looking at power in a purely inductive AC circuit. So the power dissipated in an inductive AC circuit at any moment in time is the product of the instantaneous voltage and the instantaneous current at that present time. Very similar, the same approaches we used with uh, capacitors. And if you remember, power equals the instantaneous voltage multiplied by the instantaneous current, where V instantaneous is the sine of V max, I instantaneous is the sine of I max. In a purely inductive circuit, remember, the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. And we're going to use our little table again, our third time to use the table. Again, we've got a maximum of 10 volts and a maximum of 4 amps. Again, we have our first positive half cycle and we've broken that up into the angle, the instantaneous voltage, the instantaneous current. We multiply those together and we get the instantaneous wattages. I'm not going to go through every single little one or select some special ones. Let's look at the table as a whole. And you'll notice in the first quarter cycle here, I'm circling it with my cursor, we've got negative power. So power is being fed into the circuit. The magnetic field is collapsing and energy is being fed into the circuit. But notice on the next quarter cycle, we're using energy that energy is being used to build up the magnetic field around the inductor. Our next quarter cycle is over on the next half of the table and you'll notice all the energy is negative. All that energy that we've just stored is being fed back into the circuit, the magnetic energy, and then finally our last quarter, all the energy is being built up again. So very, very similar, if not identical to the capacitor, but we're exactly 180 degrees different. I don't know whether you've picked that up between the two tables, but they're actually 180 degrees separated from each other. So what a capacitor does is 90 degrees from the voltage lead and inductors do the same thing, but 90 degrees current lag. And when you put the two together, they're going to be 180 degrees out from each other. So here's the waveform for the pure inductive or the pure L circuit. And again, you can see our blue wave being the voltage. The current is lagging by 90 degrees. But you can see power is being stored here in the negative quarter of a cycle. So in the first quarter of the cycle, stored negatively. In other words, energy is being fed back into the circuit. Then positive energy being stored into the circuit. Negative energy, positive energy, negative, positive, negative, positive, so on and so forth. So what we can say here is no actual energy being used. The average over here, the average power used is zero. So we're storing and releasing our energy back into the circuit. The power waveform is at double the fundamental frequency. So whatever the fundamental frequency is here, the power is double that. It is sinusoidal in shape. And again, it's doing this all because we've got magnetic energy being stored, then released. Stored and released. But as it releases, it's trying to oppose and it gets caught behind and it gets caught behind by that 90 degrees. So that's how it works for power in a pure inductive circuit. So about power in a pure inductive circuit has the same shape as a sine wave. The power waveform swings both positive and negative. This means power is consumed during one quarter of the cycle and returned to the supply in the very next cycle. The power waveform is twice the frequency of the voltage and the current waveforms. And the power waveform has an average of zero. 
which means the circuit is not dissipating any true power. The power is saved and released, saved and released. It's just doing it a little bit behind by 90 degrees. So let's now summarize everything that we've done in lesson three. So this is a summary of lesson three, parts one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So in summary, resistance, capacitance, and inductance are fundamental electrical properties. Resistance has the same properties in AC or in a DC circuit. The current and the voltages are always in phase and true power is consumed. It's the only place that power is consumed. Resistive circuits, I can't say this too often, only resistive circuits consume power. That's why it's called true power. Capacitors and inductance, inductances exhibit a reactance, an AC resistance to what is happening in an AC circuit. Reactance is opposition to an alternating current caused by an electrostatic field or a magnetic field that acts as to oppose the current change. It tries to resist current change. So reactance is the opposition to an alternating current caused by either an electrostatic field in a capacitor or a magnetic field in an inductor that acts to oppose the changing current. The current flowing in a purely capacitive circuit leads the voltage across the capacitor by 90 degrees. So the current flowing in a pure capacitive circuit leads the voltage by 90 degrees. The current flowing in a pure inductive circuit lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So if one leads by 90 degrees and the other one lags by 90 degrees, the actual phase difference between the two of them is 180 degrees. But we will get into more of that in the next lesson. A circuit containing only pure capacitance or pure inductance does not consume any true power. As power is periodically taken from and returned to the supply. This is called reactive power. So this is a new term that we've just introduced. So the power that doesn't actually get consumed either in a capacitor or an inductor is called reactive power. And you'll see this come into play in lessons to come. So inductance is L in Henry's, capacitance is C in Farad's, and to have a reactance, we have a reactance is X, capital X, in ohms. That depends on the frequency, F, in hertz, and the values of the components in your circuit. The two big equations that we've learned about in this lesson is XL is equal to 2 pi FL, and XC, capacitive reactance, is 1 on 2 pi FC. So you can see there they are mathematically opposites to each other. They are the inverse to each other. The reactance in a pure inductor or a capacitor can also be found with Ohm's law. So we can find X in a, as long as we know what the voltage is that's applied to the circuit and the current through the capacitor or the inductor. Therefore, we can find out what the reactance is. In a purely reactive series circuit, the total resistance is found the same way for series circuit of resistors. We can just add them up one after the other. When voltage and currents are known, the reactance, inductive reactance, can be found with Ohm's law. X equals V on I. And to substitute the formula around, we can also say I equals V on X and V equals I times X. So just straight Ohm's law can be applied as long as we know what the reactance is, the current and the voltage across the component. I've also found some uh, nice little YouTube video clips. Uh, each one runs for about 10 minutes. I can't run them here, but I'll put them on the 
e-learning facility, uh, resistors in an AC circuit, capacitors in an AC circuit, and inductors. Um, I will warn you that uh, each of the video clips is gets reasonably techy, techy with some of the mathematics. I wouldn't worry too much about the maths and the way they express it, but they do give you a good insight into why voltage and current stay in phase in a resistive circuit. In a capacitive circuit, they get out of phase and the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. And in an inductive circuit, the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. They do a good job of explaining why that happens with some nice little animations. So if you have the time, they take 10 minutes each. Um, and uh, yes, you can get the links. I'll put them on the e-learning facility for you.